Welcome everybody to the driver's press conference ahead of the FIA Formula One Belgian Grand Prix. Two groups for you as ever this afternoon. And first up, as you can see from left to right, we have Lewis Hamilton, Kevin Magnussen, Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso and Joe Guan Yu. Very warm welcome to you all. Welcome back after the summer holidays. Um, Joe, why don't we start with you? Um, first up, how were those holidays? What did you get up to? Yeah, mine was pretty simple, to be honest. Uh, went straight like, back to work for some magazines uh, for the Chinese people because I didn't really have time to do that and uh, done some shootings the first week. And then actually I stayed in UK because my family actually flew, you know, in the Silverstone weekend for the first time. They, the whole family was here and uh, yeah, we stayed put pretty much all the time in UK and actually I went to the beach in UK because it was very nice and sunny there, 30 degrees. Uh, yeah, we had we have had fun with the family and uh, now obviously back to work. Well, I guess the break gave you a chance to take stock of everything that's happened so far this year. So how do you reflect on the opening 13 races and going forward, what areas are you going to focus on in terms of your own performance? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, I think it was better than I expected in terms of uh, the speed. We was able to reach reasonably quick up to the speed, also matching or catching up the, the gap with Valtteri from the beginning of the year first race to now onwards. And uh, it's been good in that. And obviously there's some weakness I have to improve. And also I feel like uh, yeah, the first half I've been quite extremely unlucky in some cases with quite a lot, you know, DNFs, I think most most DNF on the grid. So I think I feel like we deserve more points. So hopefully everything will be reasonably much smoother for the coming races. And uh, yeah, we'll be working on together with together with the start. I think it's quite clear for, for our team. We're struggling first lap and to get that fixed and they should be having more opportunity fighting with the points. All right, well, best of luck with that. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you, Joe. Fernando, coming to you, um, you've been at the centre of the Formula One news cycle over the break. Uh, so tell us, why Aston Martin next year? Well, um, yeah, it was for two or three days. Then it changed. Uh, there were more news coming. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, I had this possibility. I had um, the, yeah, the, the phone call from Aston. Uh, after Sebastian uh, announced that he was stopping at the end of the year, so yeah, at that point we we sit down and yeah, we we go to to this agreement. Um, I think the project is is very attractive. Obviously, there is a lot of investment going on in the last few years. Um, a lot of new people came to the team. Uh, very talented um, engineers, designers, uh, new facilities in Silverstone. So. I don't know. I felt that uh, it was a nice project for the future. Um, they were extremely happy to uh, to join forces and to have this possibility to to grow up together. And yeah, we felt that it was the the right thing to do. On paper, you're moving from a team that currently sits fourth in the constructors' championship to a team that is sitting ninth. So, what are you expecting Aston Martin to do for next year? Let's see. I think uh, for sure there are some some risk on on every decision you make in Formula One. No one has the crystal ball to, um, yeah, to guess the future. Um, at the same time, uh, in Formula One or in any, any sport, you win or you don't. Um, it doesn't matter to be fourth or ninth or thirteenth. You are first or you are not winning. And uh, I think. Um, all the Formula One teams and drivers, we are here to uh, to be on dot, in that top spot. Um, and yeah, I felt that within the possibilities that I had on, on the table for next. Mm, so low. And um, it's the place that I've, it's the continent I've wanted to go and visit. Whilst I've been there before, it's the place I wanted to go more than anywhere. Um, and I got to obviously travel in lots of different places. It, uh, incredible how uh, welcoming everyone was and um, it was a very grounding experience, you know, to see um, the incredible landscape and the different countries that we went to. And just, it was a very humbling experience just seeing people live with literally nothing. It just, uh, in a, in a, it's like a, uh, a house made of sticks, you know, literally twigs. And um, no shoes, no socks, and going about their daily lives, you know, not with social media, not with the stuff that we all, we all have in Western world and 
um, and didn't seem like they took anything for granted, which was really quite beautiful to see. Now, if I can bring it on to performance uh, this weekend, how excited are you by the pace of your car? Do you think that win, that first win of the year, is close? I do, uh, definitely. I think, uh, of course, we came in, we've been improving. We've had this consistency that's come up uh, of the recent races um, and great progress that the team is just making. Everyone pulling together, continuing to push. And uh, the car's becoming more of a more of a racing car, which is uh, not particularly what it was at the beginning of the year. More like a normal racing car in, in the sense of its characteristics. So that's positive. And um, the last race was obviously the best showing that we've had so far. And, and that for us was a huge boost of just that we can close that gap. So um, it's naturally going to continue to be tough. We will keep our heads down. The other guys are doing an amazing job. But I do believe that we can close the gap. Well, best of luck with that and best of luck this weekend. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, let's open this to the floor now. Uh, first question, please. Thanks ever so much. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, good to be back. Um, the question for Fernando, David Croft, Sky Sports F1. Um, let's try and take a bit of a deep dive, if we can, into that Hungarian Grand Prix uh, weekend. You, you got the phone call um, from Aston Martin. Who did you speak to uh, at the team? When, when did you sign uh, your contract? And if that phone call hadn't have happened, uh, would you have been happy to stay with uh, Alpine for next season? Yeah, well, you ask... Too many details, which uh, then is it's up to us to disclose everything. But uh, yeah, I have no problems to say that um, everything started when Sebastian announced the, the retirement. I think Aston was um, waiting for that decision. They were happy with Sebastian to continue one more year. Uh, at the end, Seb decided to stop, and they they gave probably you know they they start calling some drivers that they they were interested of. Um, I was one of those, and I still available. Um, and yeah, we we start talking on that weekend uh, briefly about the conditions that I was expecting, uh, about what they were expecting from me as well. Um, yeah, we meet uh, quite quickly in, on our expectations and fulfill all our wishes. And um, and yeah, on Monday morning we we sign and uh, we decide to announce quite quickly before any leak. And um, yeah, that's that's more or less the timeline of so no other. You know, we were not moving forward from from a couple of months already, and uh, and yeah, uh, it seems that it was a logical move to me because Aston was very willing to to have me and uh, um, trust on, on my abilities on on the track and off track as well to develop the project, and um, and yeah, in in my case also. It felt that uh, after all the negotiations and the months, um, having the the seat available for for a younger driver and, and talented driver like Oscar, it was it was the right thing to do and a win-win situation seems for everybody. Thank you, Fernando.